Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we're talking with Sonia and Portia about how to see beyond your filters. Thank you for listening. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show where we talk about what's possible in the world. Um, tonight, yeah, I'm, I'm in the studio. My name is Talana Simpson. For those that don't know, I'm in the studio with Jack. Hi, guys. Welcome Hi. again. And we have Tim, our producer. And we have our two special guests, Sonia Cruz, otherwise known as Miss Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> Your Ubuntu girl. <laughs> and, okay, I call him Miss Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Portia Mahange. Um, who is a, an amazing poet, Hi adventurer, everyone. and explorer of people and cultures. And, and life. And life, it seems they are. So we are going to be trying to demystify, demystify a taboo tonight. Yeah, we are so conditioned, I think, by everything. So, so remember in our first show, Jack, we, we had a little video about filters. That's and, right, yeah. And what it was is... Depending what you literally focus on and what you're exposed to as you grow up and as well, all the time, it develops your filters and it filters what information comes in and what information we ignore, and that develops your perception. So it's what you actually see and, and how you perceive yeah, the world. Th th those are the it, – it, it influences, well, the way you, you, you interact with people, the way you interact with yourself, the way you interact with your family, with money, with you name it. Um, and, yeah. and, yeah, and they are basically develop those filters – by the way, we conditioned, and we conditioned by everything from our family and our parents, you know, how they taught us, how they, what they exposed us to, um, our culture and the media. The media plays a huge, huge role, especially in today. So what so are we going to do tonight? <laughs> we are going to be conditioning <laughs> 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 everyone that's listening to us by setting up a new filter. No, so seriously, we, we already are trying to just – it's almost recondition is, is a word Tim used for us. And yeah. Is – by, by hopefully, that's what I think what the show about. Let's talk possibilities. We, we want to just show people another way so that, that oh, they're choosing filters, their conditioning. Would, yeah, that be? yeah, and their filters can just be opened. And like, wow, I never I never thought of it that way, is, is what a lot of people say mm -hmm. when their filters are being broadened. So we're going to be we're doing that tonight by by some stories that, that you two, um, Sonia and Portia, bring into into the studio tonight. But how, how to actually just see people for who they are instead of how they've packaged, you know, mm. in other words, to be colorblind, to not see, see things like people's race and, and how they present, you know, what they are, the they're spirit, packaged, the but to see race. more than that, more than that, because we are different and we are the same. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's like we said earlier, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a country like South Africa, um, we have so many cultures and we all know this. We mm. have so many languages. We have... Such, I think, one of the most diverse countries, which is, to me, and I, I know to you guys as well, what gives us that richness and that essence of who we really are. And um, so, yes, we are different. We are different. And yet we are the same. Yet we are, as humans, we are the same. And when we go back to our hearts and we go back to the core of who we are and we get rid of all those filters and conditioning and, and, and we interact mm. As human to human. And, and when we interact on that level, that's when you get to see the, the person's gift, what they, it's so special, that what they have to, to share. Mm. Mm. And so, yeah, we've got some wonderful stories to share. And I know you, both of you have touched me. So, um, the Ubuntu girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is Ubuntu? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ubuntu comes from the Nguni language group, which is, in Nguni language group is Isizulu, um, Khoza, uh, Siswati, and Ndebele. Um, and the, if you translate it, in, it it's Ubuntu, Ngumuntu, Ngabantu. A person is a person through other people. I am because you are because we are. Um, and you can't be human on your own. And if you are hungry, then I am hungry. And it, it speaks mm. about the spirit of, of our humanity, and it's a, it's a global concept. Um, do you want to know why, why yes. I'm the Ubuntu girl? <laughs> Tell us why. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I, um, a friend of mine called me the Ubuntu girl because I set off um, in pursuit of following my dream. And um, I, I basically took a backpack, a camera, a hundred rand, um, and went um, off into South Africa and spent uh, 351 days um, going around our country walking and hitchhiking, 
knocking on doors. Sometimes people just pick me up the side of the road. Um, 150 families took me into their homes from 16 different cultures in 114 of our towns. Um, and I had no bank cards, um, no tent, no sleeping bag, no food, just 100 rand, no identification, an open heart and an open mind. Um, mm -hmm. And John, so a friend of mine who heard what I was doing said, that means that you're going in search of that spirit of Ubuntu. So what made you what made you go search for that spirit? What? Um I've been a I've been a um a very strong dreamer all my life. Since the age of three I've dreamt. Um and my dreams um is where I go the dreams is my oracle. That is where I go to know who I am and to know what I'm supposed to do. And though I think in in society we, we look at the e we look at ego and we look at society for that. Mm. But I go inwards and my dreams have always guided me. Um, and um, this dream persisted. It stuck around for four years. I mean, this dream with the backpack, the camera, the open road, the, yeah, and then a book at the end of the of the road, and books flying off the windows on wings. Um, and, and a lot of your, I think your, your dream, as you've been saying, is was about to find the stories of the people yeah. because the, the media, which is one of the things that condition us, sometimes has such yeah. a slanted view of this yeah. country. Mm -hmm. You were going to find the 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 more true stories. The the yeah, I think the the stories that don't sell the newspapers, but the stories that actually explain who we are and, and what happens. I mean, on the journey, I would sometimes get to a community and they'd say, you know, it's so lovely that you've come to us. It's so safe here, but oh, you mustn't go to the next town. Oh, no, it's bad there. <laughs> you go to the next one. Oh, we're so glad you came here. And I think that the media has a tendency to do that because we live in bubbles and so we don't explore. And, um, and so we take what's in the media as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. Um, but that's one part um, of what happens. So I'm not saying that what, what the media says doesn't happen. No, but it does. Um, just yeah. So on your journey, and, and this is one of the reasons we got both of you tonight, yeah. is on your journey, you guys met. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, tell us a little bit, because you guys were both on your own journeys, and then it all came, kind of came together at a point which a which set it off on another slant of its own. Yeah, totally. Portia, where did we meet? How did we okay, meet? Okay, we, we met in Naisna. I was on holiday with my five-year-old. She was three years then. And uh, Sonia, I guess, was right in the beginning of her journey. And I wanted to visit a township in, in Naisna since I was staying in the waterfront in town. And I felt like a tourist, so I wanted to experience the township there because okay. I also come from a township. Um, my hometown is Soweto. Mm -hmm. And so we met uh, through this uh, tour guide operators where she was staying, and we went to pick her up at a school. And, yeah, I think the rest, she yeah. nobody tells a story. <laughs> Uh, you know why I tell the story because Portia, um, she's a poet, and and so when she when she when she speaks, she, her her poetry book is actually called Ejaculate, because when she speaks, it just comes, and, and it's like she's just a, she just channels it, and so she does you know when she comes with these wisdom, she doesn't always record it. <laughs> and I'm not going to make any funny references here, <laughs> but um, so um, so she said to me. Um, I was, we were sitting around and I realized that she's a poet and she's a chartered accountant and, um, and she's a mother. And I was intimidated by her because there I was, homeless, jobless, carless. So I thought, okay, the least that I can do is to be politically correct. And so I said to her... As we try and always do. Yeah, you know, because yeah. that's the other thing. We try and overcompensate at times, which is also not coming from truth. Yeah, so you're not being yourself. Yeah, so I, so I said to her, you know, there are places in South Africa I won't go, like Oranya. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> So why wouldn't you go to Orania? What was the politically politi correct reason for not going there? Um, Orania is, is, um, is an Afrikaner uh, community um, that is uh, um, exclusively for Afrikaner people, and it's, to, it's for cultural upkeep. Um, okay. And it's, you know, it's, it's quite exclusive. And so I, I, I didn't think that that, that was um, fair or correct or right, and I was judging that. Mm. And, and Portia pointed that out to me, and... Um, and she said to me, you know, you've decided to go on this journey, so you have to keep an open mind. And people mm -hmm. of Aranya are people of our country. And if you go to Aranya, you will find the spirit of Ubuntu there. 
So there I was. I've got a, a, a black South African telling me a white South African to go to Orania <laughs> <laughs> with their own, you know, money currencies and their booms where people aren't allowed to go in. It's private property, wow. um, etc. And um, and yeah. And so I I, I decided that, that that day that I will go to Orania. And so did you find Ubuntu in Orania when you? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did, I did, and I, I actually write in the in the in the book about that and, and the profound you know impact that the people there had on me. But I phoned um, Portia um, after three days in Orania, and I thanked her for reminding me to keep an open mind um, and to yeah, it's and just very great. Go and experience awesome. and see for yourself, yeah. and, and and not and what the media. There the I am looking for stories that the you know the media look. The media tells us this and that, and there I, I was going to avoid Orania based on that and on my own prejudice, yeah. and yeah. so. Well, talking just quickly, talking about your book. Um, it's actually our book for tonight. Oh, cool! Um, Yay! <laughs> it's which not isn't even published yet. yet. <laughs> it's not published yet. It's written. I've seen it. the manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> just um, good proof. <laughs> but it's, it's well coming. on its way. Yeah. Um, mm. And we, yeah, I saw some of the chapters the other night as well, and uh, some really interesting stories in there. Yeah, so yeah. well written. If you guys go to theubuntugirl.evly.com, um, you can actually have a look there. Oh. Um, a little bit about Sonia's story, uh, about the book, and, um, and about yeah, if, you, if you keep track of that site, you'll you'll find out when it's published and how to get yourself a okay. copy. You can even Ubuntu style be part of be part of the book. Yeah. yeah. So there are so many stories because I've been privileged to to hear a lot of them. Um, we're not obviously going to be able to touch on them, but we're going to come back to to one of them in a moment. But first, I want to just ask Portia a bit more about um, one of your stories. We, we, because obviously being the explorer you are, yeah. I mean, you went from, you know, Soweto down on holiday to, to visit another township there. So you, you also did something up here in Johannesburg. You went to, to see someone from a totally different culture from yours mm -hmm. because you wanted to meet him not and, and create your own impression of him and not rely on what other people have, have said. So you went to, to meet St Steve Hoffmeyer. Yes. Wow. Who, who is yeah, it? If I was going to picture <laughs> the opposite of Portia, it yes. would it would definitely be st Steve <laughs> Offer. <laughs> so, so he's an African singer. He'd written a book, and this was a, a reading. Yes, it was a reading. He had launched a book before, and because the book was in Afrikaans, when I first saw it in a in a book sh in a book shop where I was buying some books, I I wanted a, a translated version they didn't have, and so when I saw this um, advert on Citizen that he was going to do a book reading in English, I thought, okay, this is an opportunity for me to at least you know, understand uh, and, and share in his experience. And I got there, Centurion Mall, and, um, yeah, I was a bit late, so they started discussing already the the book. It's quite a, a complicated book. It's got three stories. There's fiction, there's history, and there's factual stuff. So, I mean, really, I even in, in English, I probably ha would have struggled, <laughs> let alone Africans, because <laughs> my Africans, I, yeah, I lost it a long time ago, you know, in high school in metric. So um, th for me, uh, it was very important to experience him personally because uh, for the most time I knew him as, a, as an African uh, s um, singer in terms of singing in his mother tongue. And um, then recently, you know, the media started to, to s say that he was controversial with in, in terms of his political view. But I'm very skeptical of the media. Um, so I, I wanted, because especially being an artist, I think for me, I understand something about artists writing poetry myself, mm -hmm. that sometimes those people are very deep. People just misunderstand them, you know, and the media can take one angle of an individual or misconstrue a word they used, you know, because they want to sell in the newspaper. So I went to that space to experience him personally. And, you know, look him in the eye and really see when he's talking to me, what is he saying? And um, during question time, then, um, you know, the, um, s w the facilitator, I think it was from a guy from Citizen, then asked the question, you know, you know, you being controversial, using the book for propaganda, and so on and so on. And in his response, I think, responding to his political views, who was saying, he then said that, look, um, it, it, it's important that Africans understand that they have a right to self-determination. It is protected internationally. However, when they do that, they do it exclusively outside, you know, uh, the exchange within South Africa, because once you become um, on your own, like with the people in Orania, you don't get to experience the entire rainbow nation, 
And that is what you then have to forfeit. You choose whether you do it or not. Mm. And I guess even the people on Ranyo, mm. there was a cost to it, but there was also a gain because then they get to experience their culture in the way they want to. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And for me, you know, when I was reflecting back to uh, on what he said going back home, because we, we, we did talk about other things and tell me about his web, uh, Facebook page, etc. cetera. Um, I realized that we do it anyway. It's just that we probably think that it is strange when Africans do it. And maybe it's in the way they do it because it's in the public space. But when I go home, because I was driving back home, that's exactly what I do. I drop and the that's English. Our filters. Sorry, yeah. it's, it's like we, we just think what's what we expose, that's normal. Yeah. Like my, my culture, my home must be normal. So if someone else's is, is, is not. Yeah, so yeah. No, it's different. It's, yeah. Yeah. So yes, we, we self-determine ourselves mm. all the time. So as I was driving home, you know, I'm going to my space and I was already thinking about the things I'm going to be doing there, which are not, uh, which are different from what I was doing in, uh, when I was at the, the in, the in, in the public space. Mm. And that's how I also self-determine because yeah. yes. I do what I want to do in my space. And when I'm with other people, I have to negotiate. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of this actually kind of goes, refers back to one of, one of the other shows in terms of the reference points as well. Mm. And obviously the conditioning um, where, I have certain reference points for my culture. Yes. And the the little reference points that I have for other cultures, I now try and understand, but I still stick to mine. Or those other things that I accept. Yes. And somebody mm -hmm. else does the same, and somebody else does the mm -hmm. same. End of the day, we all have these separate little, little pods of life instead of opening up and really understanding... Um, and I think yeah. we don't. We have to remember we don't have to lose our. Yes. No, you don't have no. to give it up. Differentness, yeah. but but just to to be open as as you learn from Porsche to be mm. open to explore. Yeah. So so what I want to just move on down to to the, to the next story. Um, I was driving along and I know you were being <coughs> interviewed in my car and you told the story oh. and I like you said you have to share the story because so it touched me so much because it made me really think, what would I do in that situation. So you know the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she, she, she read us the story last night. Well, actually, two yeah. nights ago. Um, yeah, and, I, and the, the fact that the, 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 it was from Cosmopolitan, the woman phoned me, and, and the fact that you were there to listen to it, to give me the, the um, view into the impact that the story can have, was phenomenal because I, I didn't think to share the story because we, we do sometimes pussyfoot around co race, and I was mm. trying Thing to be politically <laughs> correct. And it's so it's it's like duh. This is like the best story for the book. And um, but basically, I was staying in um, Orange Farm, uh, which is uh, Greater Soweto. No, no, yeah. it's outside. Okay, it's another. Yeah, it's another somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when somewhere you walk there. and hitchhike, yeah. you don't you don't you look at the yeah. pretty things. You don't yeah. look at yeah. the directions. Um, and um, and I was staying with Vumalani uh, Sebek or Vumalani Harry, who's a phenomenal artist. He's actually got a, um, his own little studio uh, gallery in Newtown now. Um, and um, he was going to work the next day in, a, in, his, in the call center, and I was staying behind with his, his mom and his dad and, and the little ones. And he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable in his home, so he asked me, he's going to the shops, can he get me something? And I said, no, no, no. And because I refused, he said, then you're coming with me because you will have something like th that you can call yours in the house tomorrow so that you don't feel that you have to ask for something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. your Ubuntu. <laughs> 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 and we were walking and we were walking towards this, uh, it's a big shop, right? It's a center, um, a shopping center. And we were walking past and we were chatting away. And then um, there was a queue outside one of the shops um, or an ATM or something. And we walked past. And somebody said something, and they, it was in Tswana, and I don't speak Tswana. Um, and, um, but, you know, you don't, we also forget that communication is nonverbal. So even when you say politically correct things, whatever you believe does come, so come through. through. Yeah. Yeah. So he said something, and I knew that it was about me, and I knew that it was not something nice or complimentary or loving. Mm. And, and I just uh, walked past, I was there with Vumalani, and it was like, you know, I'm, I've had an amazing journey to that date. I think it was six or, you know, about, yeah, eight months, I think, into the journey. And we walked past, and Vumalani stops. We're about 50 meters away from the queue, and he's, he's shaking his head, and he turns to me, and he puts his hand on, on my arm, and he just says, can you please wait here for me? I've got to go and do something. And he turned around, and he walked up to this guy, who, I, uh, you know, I couldn't even remember the guy, 
And Bumalani is a tall guy with dreadlocks, cool dude. But I just saw his, his body language and he just had his hands up and he was talking to this guy in a nice way. And I couldn't even see the guy behind him. And he, you know, it was very short, turned around and came back to me. And, you know, then I looked at this guy and, we, and when Bumalani got to me, we turned around and went back towards the shop. And we didn't walk five meters. When I, like, I nodded, you know, shook my head, nodded, shook my head. <laughs> looked at uh, Vumalani and put my hand on him and he could see the fire in my eyes and I didn't even have to say anything and I, you know, and he nodded and I turned around and I walked up to this guy and at this point he wasn't looking at me, he had his back faced, you know, he was talking to somebody else and I had no idea what I was going to do um, and I got to him in, 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 the, in the walking towards the queue, people were, you know, like sucking in their air. Like, they didn't know what was going on, and you could hear a pin drop, like, you know, because he didn't notice me approaching. And when he turned around, he must have sensed something was happening, and he turned around, and there we were, face to face. And it's in that moment when you look into somebody's eyes, and you look beyond the person, you look at the spirit of that person. Mm -hmm. And I, I had no idea what I was going to do, and I just looked at him, and I think I said something like, um, Kunjani Baba, or, or I said Sabona Baba, which is a respectful term. Um, and he nodded, and, I, and I, I said to him, do you mind if I hug you? And he was like, quiet, the whole queue was quiet, and he <laughs> just looked at me, and I think he didn't know what to do, and there was shock in his eyes, and, um, and then he, he put his arms around me, and the whole queue was quiet, I didn't think anybody <laughs> was breathing, <laughs> he just put his arms around me, but uncomfortably at first, you know, like, what is this? And then you could feel, as he was feeling the freedom, and he, he embraced me and he held me close to him. And he actually twirled me around eventually <laughs> and then put me down on the ground. And that was it. We didn't speak. We didn't have to speak. And we looked at one another and we just nodded. And I turned around and walked away. But I did hear some ululating <laughs> in the queue. And some people were you know, like, chitter, chitter, chatter. Yeah. And um, I got to Vimalani and we didn't speak. We, we didn't have to speak. I looked at Vimalani and we both just you know, smiled and carried on walking to the shop. Mm. Um, he did tell me a, a few days later, oh, the, the cops were actually there and they were circling and they were wanting to make sure that this Mlungu, this white woman, is okay here yeah. in the township. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that had a profound impact on me. I never got his name, didn't get his number, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he it was the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember after you said to me, like, um, often we do the wrong thing in a wrong situation. Mm -hmm. In other words, we, we react from from fear or from mm. from ego, mm. from from hurt mm. instead of action. And so, yeah, it's, it's amazing that you went and did something which which just seems so opposite to to yeah, what we are. And like well, not reacting to not reacting to an emotional response instead of just just going with your heart, if if you can call it I that. I think it, yeah, I think it was a reaction to his emotional response because mm. I realized, you know. Um, um, what is it? What is it that we f we? F Hello, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no, we mock what we don't understand, yeah. or we we fear what we don't understand. Mm -hmm. exactly. mm -hmm. And I realized, I saw in that moment, he doesn't understand me, he doesn't mm -hmm. see me, mm -hmm. and I realized that it's fear and anger that does that, and that's the barriers that we put up. And I realized, but I can see you. I mm. see you. I don't see the wall. I see you. Mm. Um, and that's, that's what you react on. And then you can, and then you can say, but I've been there. I, I'm also angry and fearful at times. It's a human condition. Of course. Mm. And so it's, it's, it's also embracing that fear and anger in myself. Mm. You know. It's interesting you said, I see you, because you know the word saubona. It means I see you. Yeah. It's mm. a greeting, oh. but it yeah. means I see, see you. you. Yes. Yeah. And it's, I think that's, that's, that's quite profound, that actually. Yeah, it means well, that. Yeah. That kind of links into uh, the one thing we wanted to talk about to you specifically. Okay. And uh, the one thing I got to learn about you through Talana okay. was um, she kept talking about your, your, your self determinism. Okay. Um, as in determining yourself, as in determining the self and not being conditioned um, by that. What. What specifically do you mean by self-determinism? Um, sure, I've never really ha thought about it. <laughs> because <laughs> That's I'm why you're I'm the in spot. the process. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the process. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I'm in the process. You know, when you're in the yeah. process, and I think it is a lifetime um, goal of mine 
and and not to do it by myself, but to, for other people to do it as well, because we become slaves of other people's thinking and thoughts, especially media. I think these days it's so powerful, mm. you know, and uh, it, and I think the media also knows it and they're misusing that power. So for me, self-determination is where I can get to a point where I understand why I'm here, because those were the questions I asked myself a long time, why am I here? And in knowing that, then I will live that experience I in my own terms. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter what the universe or what my spiritual beliefs are, but I'll do it in my terms because not somebody else came, I came. Yeah. You know, and I want to do it the way that it works for me. Mm. You know, if conditions are not allowing me to do it one way and I can read them quickly, I need to be able to do it in that way. So I mustn't be forced to do it only one way. And that's what mm. tends to happen. The media will actually create an opinion about a situation, but it's not only one sided. Mm. You know, so I, I want to get to a point where I can wake up in the morning and decide what I want to do and take responsibility for my actions and the consequences. Mm. 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 Which is great because it doesn't both your stories. I often, th when I hear them, I think, well, what would I have done? I mean, what would I have said to you if I had met you? Okay. And then, what would I have done if I'd been to that guy and walked up to him in the queue? Exactly. Um, yeah. So there's a little movie that um, I think we're going to end off of okay. now. It's, it's, it's called Say Something Nice. The guys from Improve, Improve Everywhere. Improve Everywhere. Yeah. Some, some of my heroes as well. They do little missions all over the world. And they went into New, New York okay. and they got this lectern with this megaphone. And they stuck it in the middle of you know, the busiest street corner in the middle of New York. And it's got a little plaque on it that says, Say Something Nice. And they just left it there. <laughs> and they just had like secret cameras trying to see what would people say. Okay. So what would you say? Like you got up to, you just saw this thing on the side of the road and it says, say something nice. It's quite interesting. So yeah. people in New York said, I love you, New York. And um, there you can see them bringing it, bringing it in. There were some people, they started singing songs. There was a little boy who had his, um, his Toy Story Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear, and he says, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> 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 and it just made me think, like, you know, say something nice. Like, what would I say? Mm -hmm. What would you say? I actually <laughs> 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 Good question. <laughs> no, but then I even went on Facebook and said, what would you say? And nobody said anything. <laughs> Back to me. I was like, okay, yeah. no one was saying anything. Um, I think, I think it, it just brings someone, out, you know, you know, in terms of communicating with each other, you know, we can be lighthearted, and in that, in that seeing each other and really communicating with each other, it can be, it can be from that point of view. It can. It doesn't have to be this heavy, hard, communicative thing. Mm -hmm. And we can have fun together. We can have fun, yeah. and we can set sometimes the filter of say something nice because yeah. obviously that that, that is mm. is part of that is. Portia, what would you say? Same thing I said before. Hello, beloved. Oh, <laughs> yes. that's beautiful. Nice. <laughs> well, we hope that, that anyone who's been listening in um, just got another point of view, another reference point yes. when they meet someone that they haven't met before. Just, just a, All we wanted to do is was just open up the conversation, open up our filters, just get us be, to be aware, I suppose, of how much of our conditioning influences us really seeing mm -hmm. the person in, in yeah. front of us. Yeah, I want to thank you guys really for being here tonight. Thank you for inviting uh, yeah. yeah. us. If anyone wants yeah. to get in touch with our guests, you can get Portia on um, Twitter at, at PNG859. And Sonia is her Twitter handle. Is the Ubuntu yes. Girl. The Ubuntu Girl. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, let's continue talking about possibilities around race, everyone. So you can talk to us on Twitter um, at LT Possibility or find us on Facebook or, or our blog ltp.letstalknetwork.tv TV, that's We'd it. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, our next show is on the 19th of September. Tomorrow is Let's, Let's Talk Sports. Talk sports. <laughs> <laughs> this was sports. <laughs> <laughs> we had boxing gloves and everything. <laughs> and yeah, go out there and um, let's talk about the possibilities in this world. Thank you, Thanks guys. Everyone. Once Thank again. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Oh, 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 oh,